There has been problems in my house for as long as I can remember. I remember there being arguments before my brother was born. I thought it was normal. I think I grew up thinking this was normal. But then one day when I was visiting a friend, I met her parents and started realising it wasn't. But my sister helped me understand that it wasn't. It started when Sam was mean to my mum. I would hear arguing and it would make me sad. And I would get annoyed and angry because it was non-stop. I tried to help my brother understand what was going on when he started to notice. All the arguing at home really made me feel down and the feeling lasted for a long time afterwards. I would sometimes wonder if it was my fault. One time a glass kitchen cabinet door got smashed in an argument. There was glass everywhere and it was really scary. One of my earliest memories of it is when Sam had been in the hospital and when he came back there was a big argument and we ended up having to run out the house. We knocked on the neighbour's door for help, but they didn't answer. Then Sam snatched my sister and my mum phoned the police and we ended up staying at my grandma and granddad's for the night. I got really angry for him because I wanted to protect him. I was shot at my mum and dad sometimes because it got too much for me. I felt angry about it all, but I didn't want to tell them because I thought it would upset them. I loved them both. I even shouted at my brother sometimes, but I would always apologise. I would hear them arguing all the time. They would tell me to go to my room, but it was across from the living room, so I could hear everything. They don't think about being quiet and let me sleep. I can hear them shouting from my bedroom. I would lie in bed and get really annoyed about hearing the arguments go on and on. I'd be in my bedroom, but I would still hear them arguing. It really put me on edge. I would listen to music using headphones, and I would jump if I ever heard a door close. It would make me feel bad about myself, and I would wonder if it was my fault. He even told me one time that it was my fault. Those words really went deep down inside me. It was always someone else's fault, never his. I would worry sometimes I started the argument because I could hear them fight over things I said or had done. I knew it wasn't really my fault, but sometimes I'd feel like it was. It felt like a time loop that never ends, because you see the same thing over and over. Stuff I really didn't want to see. I remember feeling really sad and annoyed that he would come storming in every time. I found it all very difficult to deal with. He was very manipulative and two-faced. He would say horrible things, like he didn't love me, and he would call me horrible names that really hurt. And even though I knew what he said wasn't true, after a while, I started to think that maybe it was. During lockdown, things got worse because my parents were stuck together and couldn't keep their arguments away from us. My mum told me that the police said I wasn't allowed to call my dad, but my dad told us we could. I was confused and heartbroken. He threatened to stop letting me see my grandparents and kept dragging them into the argument. He used to threaten us that he would come to our school and beat us up or embarrass us in front of our friends. I would look forward to the weekends for a break from school, but then by the end, I would look forward going back to school because at least there, there'd be no arguing. Sometimes when things were bad, I would end up not eating or eating loads. I'd get angry sometimes and punch a lot because I felt frustrated. I would end up throwing things or punch a wall. I hurt myself doing it once. I used to get headaches a lot. I wouldn't eat properly or eat too much or just not eat healthy stuff. It really affected my body image too, because I was always examining myself critically, even though I knew I shouldn't. When I felt really bad, I would often sleep a lot to help me cope, but other times I would struggle to go to sleep at all. It's really confusing why my parents talked to us about it. They both tried to blame each other. I didn't know who to believe. Sometimes you feel like you want to take sides, but you really don't. They would both vent at me, but it's hard when you love both people. I would always end up getting involved, either because I wanted it to stop getting worse or I would get dragged into the arguments by him. The most difficult thing to deal with was when my dad ended up leaving us. I was destroyed. I was wondering if I could get a new dad, but maybe what I really needed was a dad who cares about us all the time. I really struggled with the divorce, knowing my dad wouldn't live with us anymore. I would worry about how often I'd get to see him. One of the worst things was seeing how upset my mum got. It stopped her eating or doing stuff. It was so confusing, because you can't do anything about it, and you're only worried that it might get worse. 
The most difficult thing for me was feeling like I had to take charge and be in control of both me and my brother at such a young age. A lot of the times I played video games or solved Rubik's Cubes or played with my friends to distract myself. But you can't really forget about it, only for a little bit. I don't like playing outside because he lives nearby. My mum encourages me to go and play out with my friends, but I don't really want to. I think I developed coping strategies without realising it. I would organise things to be out of the house and busy. I make sort of a bucket list to distract myself with things to do during the holidays. Lucky for me, I can lose myself in computers to distract myself from the argument. Playing with my dog Bruno made me feel better. I like it when he sleeps with me at night. I look forward to Fridays. Staying over at my grandparents is a nice break from it all. I told my parents I was struggling with their arguing. I also told my friends. They were supportive and helped me to take my mind off of it. I also write about it in my diary. At first I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't really know who to talk to. Sometimes I would talk to myself in the mirror and talk to my reflection. I talked to my mum about what happened and how it made me feel. It helped to talk to her. I have friends that I could trust and I would talk to them if I needed to, but I haven't yet. My sister's good to talk to. Sometimes you have to ask help from adults, like the police or teachers. There's a teacher who helps us a lot, like how I deal with general anxiety. I haven't told about my problems at home, but I feel like I could. One day at school, I decided I was going to talk to a teacher about it when she asked me about something else that had happened at school. I'm not sure I'd ever want to talk to a teacher again because they just stared at me weirdly and didn't really say much. It all felt very rushed and the teacher just seemed to be taking notes, staring through me instead of really listening. I was in a classroom surrounded by others. I think teachers should be more kind if someone tells them something like that and they definitely shouldn't blab to others about it. At school I used to feel less mature but at home I'd feel more mature. I felt more comfortable to be myself at school and it sort of allowed us to be a proper kid. I'm happy I got to stay at school for my A-levels because the teachers are more hands-on and help you through life more than they would at college. The first person I told about my problems at home was my sister. Then one day my mum told me someone was coming over and that's when I met Polly. Polly's from the domestic abuse team. Telling someone about what's happening can help your family get help. Even though the teacher's reaction wasn't what I expected, after I told her what was happening, she did pass it on. And after that, our family was given a social worker and they stopped Sam from coming to the door. I found it tricky at first. I can only really talk to people once I get to know them. But once I got talking to Polly, it really did help. Eventually, I told Polly from the domestic abuse team. At first it felt strange, but talking about it definitely helps. Even though I don't always want to bother people with it. We mostly chatted, but also played a board game to help me talk about things. It really helped me get a lot off my shoulders. It's a very difficult thing to go through, and sharing what's happening with people that's gone through the same thing really helps. Polly comes to school to talk about the problems at home. She gives good advice. Talking to her feels like a real conversation too, not just like an interrogation. I got quite emotional sometimes. It was good to talk in the morning, so I get stuff off my chest and then just carry on my school day. It helps to talk with other people, but I can't always do it. I don't always know who to trust. Sometimes I just want to hang out with my friends and forget about it. My sister's really good at getting me to talk. Sometimes all I need is a cuddle off her. I think it would have helped if my family, like my grandparents, had been brought in to help support her. The police didn't make Sam stay away. He should have been told to stay away for a couple of days, but he wasn't and he just came back the next day. One day he even said, what are you going to do, call the police again? I think when things got bad, the police should have arrested my dad. Then the things wouldn't have been happening again and again. I think services should be more open and accessible, particularly at school. It would be better if all welfare was more accessible. When you're asked to go, some teachers don't trust you and think you're trying to sneak off. My school have a system where if you have a problem, you have to put a lolly stick with your name on it in a pot. It doesn't work because the teacher doesn't always check the pot. And also the other kids can see your name on it and know you have a problem. It isn't private. I think there should be more voices of students and students with special needs, including teacher training. We had a support group in school, but it wasn't always on. 
and after the teacher left, it stopped altogether. That was just when things got worse at home. There needs to be more awareness of domestic abuse. You always hear about violence, but it's not just about physical abuse. The psychological stuff hurts just as much. I think teachers need to be more aware of domestic abuse and learn to be more sensitive. I think a lot of teachers don't pay enough attention to you if you're sad or if you have special needs. I think some kids think the things they're going through aren't serious enough, so they won't tell anyone, but really they should. So we need to get that across to them. And I think there should be a role for kids in awareness raising campaigns. What would I say to help others? This is the hardest question. I would say don't fake a smile. Tell someone what's going on. Tell a friend. Tell someone you trust. If I met a young person that's gone through the same problems, I'd say, don't worry, you're not alone. I've been through the same things. I'd tell other young people who are struggling to call someone for help. I'd also tell them to find ways to distract themselves from the problems and to learn breathing exercises for when they're angry. I'd tell other young people to reach out. No matter how small you might think it is, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, it's important to ask for help. Then I would ask that young person what advice they could give me.